I'm Bimal Padali, I'm a third year cardiology fellow, and today we'll be looking at three standard views, um, uh, looking at point of care ultrasound uh, in terms of echocardiography, uh, assessing for ejection fraction. So with most procedures, uh, number one, you wanna make sure you have the right patient and you're doing the right procedure. So we're doing an echocardiogram on a, uh, a volunteer here. Um, the very first view that you look at um, in most echocardiographic exams is the parasternal long axis view. Um, to start off, uh, you want the patient to be in the left lateral decubitus position, uh, which we have our volunteer in already at this point. Um, secondly, once you have the gel on the uh, probe, um, you want the, the marker on the probe, the, the light in this case, uh, to point towards the right shoulder. So here you want to be in the third or fourth intercostal space with the light pointing to the right shoulder here. And that generally gets you into a view where you see the parasternal long axis of the heart. In this view, you will see the anterior septal wall and the posterior wall of the left ventricle. Um, and as once you get it into view here, and you know diastole and systole based on the QRS complex, you can change the, the depth here to get more of a zoomed, zoomed up picture. So two things you want to focus on when getting any of the views are to make sure you have an adequate picture of the, um, of the heart on the screen. So two things are going to help you include uh, the depth. You can um, basically uh, increase, the, increase the depth here or, or decrease it, um, which can uh, tell you a couple of things. You may want to look away from the heart to see if there's any uh, pleural effusion or pericardial effusion that would be down here. And then when you zoom in, you want to take a closer look at the different chambers of the heart. The second thing uh, to make sure you've got a good um, picture of the chamber itself is uh, you want to change the time gain uh, compensation um, from the closest to the probe up here to the most distal to the probe down here. And basically, you're making sure that the picture looks nice and clean throughout. Um, for example, if I adjust the, the, the top part of the gain time compensation here, you'll see that when I alter it, it becomes very bright here. Too bright compared to how it is distally. Um, and so most echo machines actually, um, when they're in use, um, have this auto-configured um, for you. Uh, but there are times when the picture, if it doesn't look as great, you may need to um, alter uh, the different settings there. So th this is the, again, the parasternal long axis view of the heart. And in this view, you see several chambers. Um, from top to bottom, you see the right ventricle, you see left ventricle, you see left atrium, you see the outflow tract, where you see the aortic valve, and you see the mitral valve here as well. In this one view, the, the segments of the left ventricle wall that you're seeing include the anterior septal wall and the posterior wall here. So when you assess ejection fraction, you can do it in, in, in two ways. You can do it in a quantitative way and one in a qualitative way. The quantitative way is outside the scope of this teaching session. However, from a qualitative way, um, after seeing several different examinations, um, you should be able to tell a normal ejection fraction, a moderately reduced ejection fraction, and a severely reduced ejection fraction. And what we look at is the um, thickening of the myocardium. So again, in this view, you're seeing the anterior septal wall and the posterior wall. You see very well the basal segments and the mid ventricular segments. And you can see that the thickening of those walls are, 
are normal in this sense, which um, after looking at other views may indicate that there's a normal ejection fraction. So the next view that we're going to look at is the apical four chamber view or everyone's favorite view as you see uh, the four different chambers of the heart. Um, again, you want the patient in the left lateral decubitus position um, and you want the probe uh, to be close to the apex of the heart. And part of it, it's going to depend on where you initially place the probe and, and how, how the picture appears um, and, and moving that around. And that's because everyone's heart is situated a little bit differently. If you examine the patient beforehand, which you should do, um, you should place the probe close to where the um, uh, point of maximal impulse is. Usually that equates to uh, it being lower and a little bit lateral to the left nipple. You want the marker uh, of the probe uh, to be facing towards the patient's left side or um, at the three o'clock position. So this is our classic apical four chamber view. Again, everyone's favorite view because it appears like a heart. You have the left ventricle, the right ventricle, left atrium, and, and the right atrium. You can see very clearly in this view the mitral valve um, as well as the tricuspid valve here. In this one view, you're seeing another two different segments of the left ventricular wall. You're seeing the inferior septal wall in this view as well as the lateral wall in this view. The Again, when assessing ejection fraction, um, you're concerned with and looking for appropriate thickening of the um, myocardial wall. Um, in this view, again, you can see the basal segments reasonably well, the lateral wall, anterior septal wall. You're seeing a lot of fall out and less clear endomyocardial definition of the mid segments of the wall and the apex of the wall. But again, the ejection fraction appears to be normal um, in this apical four chamber view of the heart. So our third view will be looking at the subcostal view uh, of the heart. Again, as the name um, alludes to, the view is uh, subxiphoid um, in the subcostal region. Um, this is a great view for certain situations uh, when a patient can't move or turn and they're solely on their back, for instance, if they're on a ventilator, um, if uh, they're admitted to the medical ICU and you can't move them in a trauma situation or even in a cath lab situation, you get several pieces of information from this view. So generally, you have the patient on your back. Um, they'll feel a little bit more comfortable if they um, bring both of their legs up and are, are, are bent as well, because you will be applying uh, a decent amount of pressure uh, in that subxiphoid region. So when taking the subcostal views, uh, you want to make sure that the marker is to the patient's uh, left side. Again, with the probe angulated towards the patient's left shoulder. So in this subcostal view of the heart, your this portion is the closest to the probe. You have the liver here, you have the right ventricle here, you have the left ventricle here. So in this one view shot of the heart, um, you're able to look at gross right ventricular function, left ventricular function, and whether there's a large amount of obvious fluid around the heart as well. For this reason, sometimes they call this view the fellow's view. It's the easiest one to get with the patient on its back, and um, you get several pieces of information from this view. Again, it's probably the least beneficial in terms of looking at gross LV function or uh, assessing ejection fraction, because as you can see, because of the liver and the depth of the heart away 
from the probe, it's sometimes hard to look at the endocardial border and whether you have appropriate um, thickening of the heart. So in this particular subcostal view, as you can see, you're not seeing the endocardium well. And so it's very difficult to comment on whether the endocardial function or the thickening of the heart um, appears to be normal. However, in most cases, you may be able to see the endocardium well and be able to comment on what the ejection fraction is based on uh, this in addition to the other views that we looked at, the parasternal long axis view and the apical four chamber view. So we've looked at three different views of the heart via echocardiography. Those include the parasternal long axis view, the apical four chamber view, and the um, subcostal view. With those three different views, you've seen different aspects of the left ventricle. And by qual qualitatively looking at the myocardial thickening, you can comment on whether the ejection fraction um, as a measure of systolic function appears to be normal or abnormal, and if abnormal, whether it may be mild to moderately reduced or severely reduced.